Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Come to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God, a God who is greater than all that we can understand, a God who created the world, and the world fits in the palm of his hand, a God who is there for us moment by moment uh, as we call upon him and walk beside him. Praise God for that. Our word of encouragement comes from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 3. And Samuel said to the whole house of Israel, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of the foreign gods and the Asherahs, and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Uh, obviously, the Israelites here are, are, are kind of being fought against against the Philistines, and they're praying out for God's help. And Samuel here is the prophet is, is telling them what they need to do. Um, and, and, and really, he's telling them for all of us. And what I mean by that is that we can't serve God part way. It's about serving God all the way. If we want God's help in our life, it's about following Him. Uh, we don't get to really choose to say, "Well, I want part of God. I want, you know, I want to go to church on Sundays, and I want God to bless me because of it, and <clears throat> and basically uh, call the shots." The truth is, we don't call the shots. Uh, we don't do it in our life. We don't do it in, in, a, in a spiritual life. Um, we're either slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. We get to choose. Um, and we choose from day one to be slaves to sin. And maybe it's not even really our choice, if you think, but we're just all of mankind's sins. That's what we do. We fall into the traps of the devil. Or we can choose God's way, choose to be slaves of righteousness. Uh, and, and in saying that, we're choosing to say, hey, I want to come under God's control. I want to come under God's authority. I want to come under God's power. And when I do so, God will bring me hope and peace and joy. We know that the wages of sin is death, that when we choose sin, that it ultimately leads to death. We know that, that the sinful things of this world often lead to worse things. Uh, here in this world, uh, you know, uh, recreational drugs can become addictive drugs uh, and so on and so forth. We, do, we start with things and they get worse and worse and worse as we're pulled into a, a sinful world. Yet at the same time, as we draw closer to God, as we be, walk into a pattern, if we accept to be slaves of righteousness, if we ask for that, and we draw closer and closer to God. We can become more and more like Christ. That's what I want in my life. And when we become more like Christ, when we've surrendered all to God, uh, when we give away our, our, our idols, if you will, and our false gods, and really serve the Lord, then God will protect us and God will bless us. Now, that doesn't mean bad things don't happen. It doesn't mean we don't face loss or health issues or heartache. What it means is that God will walk beside us each step of the way and God will bring us peace. What it also means is that when this life is done, if we are slaves of righteousness, we'll be in eternity forever, where there is no more pain and suffering. If we're slaves to sin, then we'll be in hell where there's forever torment. Folks, I want to encourage you today that if you don't know Jesus, now's the time. Before it's too late, accept him as your savior, ask him into your heart, and, and choose to do it his way. The good news is you don't have to fix yourself. We just make this choice and then allow God to fix our lives. If we're already saved, then let's let, allow God to examine our hearts, examine our lives, and make sure there's no gods that we brought in, nothing that's more important than Him. There are times when maybe it seems like we're putting something first, and uh, you know, there's times we have to work, there's times we have family things, and uh, but we can always do it from a standpoint of loving God. Uh, but our most important focus should be God. It shouldn't be the norm to be working instead of going to church. It shouldn't be the norm to be playing or hobbies or sports instead of going to church. It should be the norm to, to be in God's house and to, to serve him and to love him. And when the abnorm comes along, it's not a problem. It's okay. God understands and God's with us. Uh, but it's the idea of we serve God first. So we set up our lives around serving him. My question for you today, is your life set up around God or is God an afterthought? If it's an afterthought or a secondary thing, then let's make God first. Let's allow him to be the first place in our lives and see what he, what he can do for us. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you, O oh God, that we don't have to fix ourselves. Uh, thank you, O oh God, that you are the one who transforms our hearts to be more like Jesus. Father, we want to be slaves of righteousness. We want to do things your way. Help us, O oh Lord, by examining our lives and showing us if there's things in our lives that are idols, if there's things in our lives that are more important than you, that we might be able to set them aside and allow you to be number one. Father, we're grateful that you're not just a part of our life, you're all of our life. And so we commit our life to you. We commit all that we do to you. We pray, oh Lord, that you would walk beside us, that you would protect us, that you would bring us hope and the joy and the peace that you promise. Father, for all these things, we'll be careful to give you the praise. Father, please bless those who need a special blessing today, be it physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. So many with so many needs, but you, oh God, 
are big enough to take care of each one. Father, thank you for all that you do according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There you have it. God loves you. Uh, let's, let's turn our all to God today, and let's have a wonderful day. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.